Okay, the next question then is um, June 07, paper 2. Just straighten this up for you. And so June 07, paper 2. This is a question about sound. It's question 3. The sound waves produced by a vibrating tuning fork can be studied using a microphone connected to an oscilloscope, which we call, in the lab, we call it a cathode ray oscilloscope, or CRO for short. And it's shown below. So this, the tuning fork struck here. The sound hits a microphone and then it's displayed as a voltage actually on the cathode ray oscilloscope. So down below, the diagram below shows the waveform seen on the screen of the oscilloscope when the tuning fork is made to vibrate. So this is a much larger diagram. And you can see it gives you a time right across here. <clears throat> it tells you the time right across here is worth 0.01 seconds. And it asks you to calculate the frequency of the sound wave produced by the tuning fork. Now, the frequency is the number of waves it makes in a second. So if I just write that down to remind you, frequency is the number of waves And so we can see from the diagram that you've got one, two complete waves there. So we've got two waves and that's in 0.01 seconds. So if we want to get our frequency, it's the number of waves in one second, we just divide two by 0.01 and that will tell us how many waves are in one second. And whenever you do that, you get an answer of 200. So you will have 200 waves in one second. Now that should make sense to you. If you weren't sure and you decide to multiply by 0.01, you know there's two waves there in a tiny, tiny amount of time. So at one second, it's much, much bigger than that. In fact, it's 100 times bigger than that. And so you should be able to see then that there have to be far more waves than two and your answer should be much bigger than two. And so it is, it's 200 here. Now, you can see here that there's no unit in here and there's five marks going. So you must make sure you put in hertz there. So your marks are for one for your unit, one for 200, two for your calculation there, and one for stating that you have two complete waves in 0.91 seconds. So even if you couldn't go any further, you'd still get one mark for writing that down. The speed of sound is 340 meters per second. Using your answer to part one, calculate the wavelength of the sound emitted by the tuning fork. So we're going to start off here with V equals lambda F and rearrange it. So lambda is what we're looking for and lambda is equal to V divided by F. So we see that our speed of sound is 340 and the frequency from over the page was 200. And that gives an answer of 1.7. So it's 1.7 meters. The tuning fork is now replaced by one which produces a sound of half the frequency. Now, think about that carefully. Half the frequency means double the wavelength. Remember, they're kind of opposite to each other. If you increase the frequency, you have decreased your wavelength. In this case, you've decreased the, wave, the frequency, so you're going to double your wavelength. On the grid below, sketch the pattern that would be seen with this tuning fork. The pattern produced by the first tuning fork is shown below. So you can see you've got two complete waves in this graph area, but you are being asked to produce a sound of half the frequency or double the wavelength. So you're going to have, or only going to have one wave in that same area there. So there's your halfway point there and so you're going to have it whatever way you want to start it off. I'm just going to put in my points here that I know that I'll be passing through. So um, I'm going to have a crest here and a trough here. One complete wave. So you're, you'll get one mark for, set, for having one wave. I'll give you one mark. And if it's symmetrical looking, they'll give you a second mark. So if it's nice and even looking, they'll give you a second mark. A sound wave passes through the air. Describe carefully the motion of the air molecules as a sound wave passes. Now you know that sound waves are longitudinal waves. And if we just draw what a longitudinal wave looks like, you have these molecules close together. 
and then spread out and then close together. Now what happens as this sound passes by, the molecules vibrate. So that's the first thing we're going to say, that air molecules vibrate. And what direction do they vibrate? They vibrate parallel to the direction of movement of the wave or direction of travel of the wave. Or you could write of the energy because it's obviously energy which has been transferred. So the wave or the energy. So you'll get one mark for saying air molecules vibrate and a second mark for saying parallel. It would be really, really worthwhile learning that answer off. That question comes up quite regularly. If there would happen to be three marks there, I would also put in there something about in a series of compressions. And you could describe about the air molecules being closer together there. And rarefactions where the air molecules are more spread out. But really what they're looking for there is the idea of vibration. And this idea of the fact that they vibrate parallel to the direction that the energy or the wave is moving in. The graph below shows the displacement of an air molecule, how it changes with time. And this is how, um, as the wave passes by, mark on the graph the amplitude of the air molecule's wave motion. So we'll just put it in here. And it's always from the rest position to the peak of a, a crest or the bottom of a trough. And I've always marked in with an A. So the amplitude of the air motion. Um, if the amplitude of the air molecule's motion is less, how would you become aware of this? And because it's an air molecule vibrating, that means that you're hearing sound. So it would be quieter. If the amplitude's less, the sound is quieter. Explain why the, why the displacement of the air molecule is sometimes positive and sometimes negative. So this idea is of your air molecule which moves one side or another as the wave passes by. And that's been translated onto, this is its displacement from its rest position there. So one side and the other side. And since they're different directions, they just give one direction a positive number and the other direction negative. And so explain why it is sometimes positive and other times negative. So it vibrates about a fixed point. Or a rest position you could write in there as the energy passes by. And that's what they're trying to get out there, that you understand it goes from one side and then the other side. And they're saying that's positive or negative, since displacement is a vector, kind of a positive direction or a negative direction. Part 5. The sun produces enormous amounts of energy in a continuous process of nuclear explosions. Explain why we can receive some of the light produced in these explosions but cannot hear them. So we've got two marks. So you have to explain something about light and something about hearing, i.e. sound. So why can we see the sun? So for your first mark we're going to say that light can travel through a vacuum. And of course the reason we're saying that is because the vacuum is between the sun and us. In space there's a vacuum. And the second um, mark is for saying that the sound cannot travel through a vacuum. And that's where your two marks are going on.